The early rain has cleared as the 2024 edition of the Peach States Derby gets underway tonight from Statesboro with two teams off to solid starts in their League One campaign. South Georgia Tormenta and the Greenville Triumph meeting to resume the longest series in League One history. Good night. My name is Russ Davenport. Thanks for joining me as we close out week seven action with the 19th all time meeting between these Southern squads in all competitions. As you see here, Greenville Triumph sitting pretty at the top of the table on 10 points. They were joined yesterday by Spokane Velocity, the new team from Washington. You see there, Tormenta, two wins, two losses, one draw coming off a nice midweek win in the US Open Cup. Three points for them tonight would, drop, would leap them up into that three way tie for first. Well, with only six returning players from last season's disappointing campaign where they missed the playoffs by one point, Ian Cameron brought only six players back and his changes seem to so far have worked. They scored only one goal in each of their thir first three matches in all comps, but then have averaged three goals in each of their last five games with 11 coming in the last three. And a big reason for that is a 23-year-old first-year pro out of the University of South Florida where he was all AAC this past fall. Ashmir Spangley is a Tampa native started seven of the first eight Tormenta games in all competitions, has a pair of assists. His coach Ian Cameron compared him to former Tormenta midfielder McQuelle Akali. As for the visitors, new look midfield under first year coach Rick Wright has been just as fabulous offensively, scoring three goals in three of their first USL League One matches. Liam McKinnon, Leo Castro, two of the best offensive talents in the league. But a big part of their success has been Ben Zakowski, a crucial injury to Sebastian Velasquez, opened opportunity for this young man, the rookie out of Monmouth, a prolific scorer in college at Monmouth. He stepped into the attacking midfield role, vacated by the injured Sebastian Velasquez. Beautifully for Rick Wright, confidence, technical ability, and technical awareness to keep this new look, new look Greenville midfield from sputtering. So we're nearly ready for kickoff here in Statesboro as the two longtime rivals seek three points in this Sunday night affair. Stick with us. We'll be right back with lineups. And the first half from George, we get ready for Tormenta against the Triumph in this season's first match in the Pete Stage Derby battle. USL League One action coming up next on ESPN+. Plus. I need to try it first. Yeah. Are you suffering from hip or knee pain? Don't let the pain hold you back. The region's most experienced robotic joint replacement team at Optum Health System offers an individually tailored approach that is more precise and creates smaller incisions. For you, that can mean a faster recovery with less pain. Your comeback starts here. Call today to find out if robotic assisted joint replacement is right for you. The Clubhouse in Statesboro, Southeast Georgia's best place to play. The Clubhouse in Statesboro, where fun is done. I'm Michelle Smith-Lang from Kids World Learning Center here in Statesboro, Georgia. Let us take care of all of your child care needs here at Kids World Learning Center, from your infants all the way to your after schoolers. We also have a summer camp and holiday camp for those older children. And we have our brand new bus for our field trips for the children to have fun and to learn and to explore new things all around our beautiful county. Thank you for trusting us with your most prized possessions. At Savannah Hilton Head International, you can choose from 11 different airlines, including Southwest Airlines, Breeze Airways, and Avello Airlines. With up to 70 daily nonstop departures and over 30 nonstop destinations, Savannah Hilton Head International gives you more choices for a travel plan that fits your needs. Savannah Hilton Head International. Visit flysav.com. Welcome back to Statesboro as we get ready for this one between Tormenta and the Triumph. This USL League One action to wrap up week seven. Take a look at our lineups here first for the home team, coached by Ian Cameron. Three changes from their midweek 4-2 cup win over Miami FC. Ford Parker, what a superb start to the season. He's had, he returns between the pipes. Bastion Vivas, he scored in that Miami win. He returns up top, as does Pedro. 
Fonseca. The back four remains the same. That's been key so far. As for the visitors, Greenville Triumph have won only one of the last 10 meetings between these two sides. That was back in July, 2-1 win. Castro a couple of goals. Two changes, Covino and Anguiano from the loss to Louisville midweek. They make way for Hayden Anderson. And Daniel Wu, the big one there. Brandon Fricky hurt his leg in a nasty challenge by Treasurer Mbuyu in that loss to Charlotte a couple of Fridays ago. He remains out. He missed the cup match midweek. Talismanic captain misses out again tonight. No Sebastian Velasquez with the hamstring. Mohamed Say yet to make his debut with the knee problem. Tormenta in all black tonight. Greenville in there. Moon kits, white, let's call them white slash gray. And we're underway here from Statesboro, Georgia. Tormenta going from right to left on your screen. Greenville left to right, Daniel Wu making his first start since June of last season. Triumph going with their three at the back that they've been running now for the last few games. Tried it in preseason, said Rick Rack, and it didn't go so well. But they seem to have figured things out. And obviously starting the early press here, which has been a characteristic of their early success here in 2024. As well as the success of the rookies, Hayden Anderson, keep an eye out, he was on the ball there, keep an eye out for his long throws tonight. Suddenly become a weapon for Greenville. Jamie Smith there at right center back. The campaign he's had so far to go with the great second half of last year. Chapa Herrera, another one of the key off-season additions at the defensive midfield spot here on the ball. As I mentioned in pregame, it was raining a little bit earlier here in Statesboro. Things have dried out nicely here. We should be good for the rest of this game. I mentioned Sebastian Velasquez, starting central midfielder. The first few games, sustained a hamstring injury. As here comes Lyon McKinnon now. Beat the offside trap. McKinnon looking for the cutback. The cross is there, but blocked away by Jake Dangler, who also scored midweek in that win over Miami. Longtime Tormenta man. Even Lyon McKinnon seemed a little bit surprised to see himself that wide open. Will be a corner here for the visitors. Kowski will take it. Swings it in left foot, it bouncing around the box. Castro's there, as is Nate Schultz. The right wing back, and he will point to the corner flag again. Ian Cameron talked about Tormenta's deficiencies on both sides of set pieces last year. Says they figured things out. Here comes Zukowski again with the left footed in swinger. Far post, Smith is there. Got half a touch on it, but couldn't direct it on target. We've seen Jamie Smith score a couple of goals from corners in recent times. Always a threat in the air, the big man from England. Dad Dean Smith, former coach at the Premier League level in England, now with Charlotte FC. His dad does make frequent trips down to see him, as well as his mom, now living up there in North Carolina. Bit of a longer trip tonight. If they did make it, it's Jackson Curry, the impressive Australian. Preston Kilwine knocks it inside. Tormenta now. A bit of possession in that final third. Callum Stretch, the big center back. Another man who scored in the middle of the week. In that crazy game against Miami. If you haven't seen that, you should check out the highlights. Miami went down to 10 men, but then managed to equalize. Before Miami pulled it out. With two late goals for a 4-2 victory. Get to the US Open Cup at halftime. Stick around for that. Talk about the next round's matchups. It's Fonseca. Sebastian. Sebastian Vivas now back to Fonseca. Out wide to Nikakota pushing forward from his right back spot. Evan Lee now with a chance to break for Greenville. Zakowski. All over the top for Castro. What a ball that is. Excuse me, for McKinnon. McKinnon now waiting for the help of Castro. Can't keep it in play. Zukowski with a delightful ball. Over the top to Lyon McKinnon. What a had four goals in a game last season, then 
got hit by the injury bug a little bit in the second half, but off to a great start here in 2024. McKinnon got the other side of Jake Dengler. Deng Dengler just stood his ground and forced the second year man from Switzerland past the goal line. Castro now with the pressure and the turnover. Veteran from Colombia tries to get a little too creative there and turns it over himself. It's been a bright start here in states but both teams knocking around nicely. Okoto, Hayden Anderson over to pay him some attention. Okoto beats Anderson, a good low cross blocked by Tyler Pollock. Pollock will look to clear and does. Longest serving players in USL League One, along with Brandon Fricky, Evan Lee, the core of this leadership group returning. The only one they really lost was Aaron Walker from the midfield to the new look midfield for new coach Rick Wright. Obviously taking over for John Harks, who announced this week he was taking a technical director job at a youth club in Virginia. Great to see John back in the game again. We knew it wouldn't be too long, which is a question of where he would pop up. Smith dispossesses Vivas. Tavio Dalmeida, number 19 there. A man from Ivory Coast, spent some time in Wales with Cardiff City. Anderson goes down under pressure from Nick Okoto. Tied first on this team in chances created Okoto from the right fullback spot. Spent some time in the non leagues in England. Came over here for college and then ended up with Tormenta 2. Such a great system they have here in Statesburg with the academy as well as the League 2 side. We've seen so many players come through that League 2 side here to League 1 and then on to greater things. Daniel Wu stepping into some big shoes tonight with Brandon Fricky out. He was on the bench midweek. In that loss to Louisville, Brandon Fricky did not make an appearance and clearly not well enough to go. It was a nasty challenge by Trezor and Boo. He did get a yellow card for it. Once they gave up that super early goal to Louisville, Rick Wright said it wasn't how they wanted to start. He said they felt for some reason they weren't quite ready before the game. But the guys took offense to that early goal, played some good stuff first half. Disappointed at the break and then gave up another goal early in the second half. Pulled one back late down 3-1. So obviously one of the best teams in USL Championship. We were a little upset after being knocked off on national TV by Charleston on CBS. Leo Castro now looking for the runner. Schultz does find him, but a little too much weight on that pass as it rolls over the dead ball line. And now for a goal kick, which will be taken by Ford Parker. Off to a great start this season. He only, had, he only got 15 pro starts under his belt. was a backup Quite a bit in the USL Championship. Leads the league coming into tonight with 21 saves. Started every league one game for Ian Cameron. Only the one clean sheet so far. That was in that last win over Lexington. Now a chance here for Tormenta to break. Jackson Curry. Oh, nutmegs Jamie Smith, but Daniel Wu helps his teammate out. Coming over for the covering tackle. Jackson Curry was another guy we talked to Ian Cameron about. I seem to talk to him about him every time we talk to him. Let's hear Spengler now, dispossessed. And then gets it back, takes it off the toes of Herrera. Born in Australia, Jackson Curry, but represents Lebanon internationally. Came off the bench a little bit earlier this season due to some international duty. Ian Cameron said he's a dream of a player, a brilliant kid. One of the hungriest young men he's ever met, always demand or ever met, always demanding information. Can play wing back as well as out wide as he is tonight. Can play both the left and the right side. He's under contract for another year and a half with Tormenta. They do like to sign these two-year deals with the third-year option. Mostly one deals, maybe one with a one-year option, but Cameron loves to develop players here at Tormenta. It's a great ball for Nate Schultz, but just can't control it. He bounces out for a throw in. Nate 
Lane. Schultz came in late in last year's preseason and really made that spot out wide at the back his own. Third round pick in 2018 by the LA Galaxy. Had 18 starts last year on the back line. Mentioned got injured a little bit. Out of Akron, University of Akron, Ohio native. Looks to be quite comfortable in that wing back spot for Rick Wright. Tormenta now, Curry. And Cameron said he's had calls from MLS sides about Jackson Curry. There's the one two here between Almeida and Akota. Doesn't quite work out. There's a ball to chase for Vivas, but. Daniel Wu will shepherd this one out. Mentioned the late season victory last year. It was in July, late summer victory, I should say, for Greenville over Tormenta. Stopped a big, long win losing streak, or winless streak, I should say, for Greenville against Tormenta. Previous win before that was back in May 2021. Tormenta just really owned this Greenville side. And Cameron talked about some of the sideline nonsense him and John Harks used to get into very similar fiery personalities during their meetings. She doesn't think Rick Wright's going to get into it with him. So Rick would probably just laugh at him. Rick Wright got a yellow card earlier this season. So it was the first one he's received I think, in his career. A lot of time coaching local college. Originally from Bermuda, Rick Wright, local colleges here. Not here, is it in the upstate area where Greenville is, in South Carolina. Greenville putting the press on here. Jackson Curry gets around, tries to get around Nate Schultz and is fouled. It's a free kick here. It's past the 11 minute mark here in States, but no goals yet so far between the Tormenta and the Triumph. Curry again. Around the ball a ton here early in this one. Still waiting for our first shot as Lyme McKinnon takes a loose hand perhaps or elbow. That ball looked like it gone out of play and it did in front of Ian Cameron's coaching box. Ian Cameron took over from John Miller AC midway through the 2020 season. Obviously Tormenta champs a couple of years ago. Talked to Ian Cameron about the amount of changes this season in Tormenta mentioned only six players returning. He said, there's certain players you'd love to keep, Kaziah Sterling, McQuelly Akale, obviously, but you just can't. It's the system they use, you can't really afford to keep them. You're going to go elsewhere and make much better money. See those two now in the USL Championship. You can't, and you also can't just say, I'm going to go get another one of those guys like that. Some changes are forced upon you. I mentioned earlier about the set-piece problems. He said that was certainly one of the off-season targets to upgrade in that department. This ball from Spengler's a little off target. Pollock intercepts. Evan Lee now, the converted center back. Playing defensive midfield now for Rick Wright. Did it last season for John Harks as well. Number 10 in college, Evan Lee scored a goal already this season. And from Toledo, Ohio, was a member of John Hart's squad in his short spell with FC Cincinnati. Here's Chapo Herrera now. Lays it off to Jamie Smith, surveying his options. Out wide to Schultz. He takes on Jackson Curry. Good recovery, though, by the Australian. And that will be a goal kick. Ian Cameron did mention the defensive prowess of Jackson Curry as well. He wants to help back just like he did there. You know, quick goal kick taken by the home team. Ian Cameron said, Greenville's going to press Louisville. I expect them to press us as well. That's exactly what Greenville have done here in the early goings. Gotta be careful on the transition, though. It's Jamie Smith. All the way over from his spot to intercept that one. And that ball goes all the way through to 
Gunther Rankenberg. Making his second straight League One start. Rick Wright, one of these coaches with a goalkeeper battle on his hands coming into the season. Christian Garner started the first four League One games for Greenville. And now Rankenberg who started two League One games as well as a cup game. It's going to be a weekly decision, Rick Wright said. It's going to be a very difficult one. Did the Chattanooga game on Saturday night against Northern Colorado. Chattanooga in a similar situation with TJ Bush and Tim Trilk. Two high quality goalkeepers. Scott Muskenzie said it's going to be the same thing. They're going to battle for that number one job all year long. So some coaches would certainly rather have just a solid number one. Not have to worry about that decision every week. Here's Zukowski now. Slips inside the Hayden and Anderson. One rookie to the other. He's dispossessed by a Kodo. And Hayden Anderson is going to be called for the foul. And so the man who scored midweek, as we mentioned, in that loss to Louisville. Greenville County native. Went to Woodmont High. Played for CESA, the local youth organization that has a great relationship now with the Greenville Triumph. Former University of Memphis man, as well as USC Upstate. Dengler. It's a Spengler. I was hoping I'd get to say that tonight, and I just did. Two men to go in long now. Jamie Smith nods it away. Helped on by Evan Lee. And it's going to go all the way back through to Ford Parker. It's Parker now under pressure from Castro. The inaugural USL Jägermeister Cup kicks off Saturday, April 27th. That's this coming Saturday featuring League One teams. Regional rivalries that highlight group play in round one. With all games streaming exclusively on ESPN Plus. As now Okoto has got the right side. Fights it into Fonseca and great save. Excuse me, that was Vivas and a great save by Gunther Rankenberg. Rankenberg showing why Rick Wright is going with him tonight. You can see he got the other side of the defenders. It was a lovely ball in. Rankenberg just made himself big, got that shin down, stopped the ball through the legs. Now Spengler, still Spengler with a left-footed effort. That's well wide of oh, Rankenberg's left-hand post. You see how dangerous this tormented attack can be. They've got things going early this season. It took them a few games to get going, but 11 goals in their last three games in all competitions. Savannah Clovers 4-0 in the second round of the Open Cup and knocked off Lexington 3-0. That was their last League One game. Back over two weeks ago now, and then they put four past Miami FC. That one will go out of play off Zakowski. Nick Wright called him. Just a complete soccer nerd. He wants to immerse himself in all aspects of the game. He flicks that one on. As does Zakowski. Eventually falls to the feet. Well, oh, Dalmeida is going to be a foul. As Preston Kilwine goes down. Kilwine, the 27-year-old from Texas. Playing of USL Championship experience with Pittsburgh. And Charleston. Here's Fonseca now. Nice ball into the channel. Coda with a first time cross. Rankenberg fumbles it first time, but luckily ends up back in his midriff. Tormenta causing trouble here on this right side in the channels. Nick Okoto getting the best of Hayden Anderson so far. It's a good thing Gunther Rankenberg got his hands back on that one. They were Tormenta players ready to poach. It's Connor Doyle, the veteran captain. Talked to Ian Cameron about that addition with all the changes. He needed a bit of stability in the middle, and Connor Doyle has provided that. He's also scored a couple of goals. As that one's turned over by Chapa Herrera sloppily. Spengler now. Looking to take on Daniel Wu. He does well standing his ground. Tyler Pollock pokes that away out for a throw. Fonseca wanted the ball a little quicker from Vivas, the man from Argentina. It's 
Scored off the bench in that 3-0 win over Lexington, as well as midweek. In from the third tier in Argentina, where he scored 13 times last year to tie for the Golden Boot. Nick Okoto has been busy so far tonight. Wu has to come and help Tyler Pollock out and gives up the corner. First corner of the night for the home team. Juice Benglet will jog over to take it. He's got some big targets. He likes a 6 4 Callum stretch. Jake Dengler, you can see, probably got an inch on him. Greenville, not the tallest team in the world. Going to go with a bit of a zonal defense here as it swung in left footed towards the far post. Rankenberg drops it again. Almost falls to the feet of Dengler. Vivas was in the area too. Here's another look at it. Not the greatest claim in the world here from Rankenberg. Misjudged the timing of his ju jump. And that's probably going to be a save as Vivas kicked it right at him. There were plenty of Triumph players on the line, perhaps, that could have cleared it away. But we'll have another corner here. This time taken by Connor Doyle. Man with tons of MLS experience. As well as time in League One with the Chattanooga Rebels and Union Omaha. He has the most appearances in USL League One history, regular season appearances, one more than Evan Lee. He's also playing tonight, so he'll keep that lead as that ball's flicked away by Smith. On the way out for a Tormenta throw as they continue to put on the pressure here. Greenville having a tough time getting out of their final third. Okoto to take the throw. Finds Curry coming over from his left wing spot. That one is off Curry and out for a goal kick. Good work there by Tyler Pola. Another one, the most. Another one, sorry, high up the list of USL League One appearances. You hear the drums here tonight in Statesboro. Tyler Pollock dealt with some injury problems last year. Play center back, can play left back. Also played some. Wing back as well. There's Zakowski now. Chapa Herrera and Evan Lee will play that sort of dual pivot role in front of the back three. There's Zakowski roaming ahead of them. Here's Daniel Wu now, the man from Georgetown. Scored his first pro goal early last season in April against NCFC. This time with some injuries as well last year. Greenville dealt with some injury problems early on last season. Schultz will not keep that one. I mentioned Sebastian Velasquez, the local man. Went to Greenville High School as well as Spartanburg Methodist. And off to MLS. Hamstring injury a couple of weeks ago, then re-injured it in training. He'll be missing at least another couple of weeks, if not more. We know how long hamstrings can take to sort themselves out. We thought initially it might be a big loss for Greenville, but that man there with that slightly misplayed pass, Ben Zakowski has really stepped in to that attacking midfield role beautifully. As a result, this new look Greenville midfield really hasn't missed a step. Past the halfway mark here in the first half from Statesboro. Ross Devonport with you. Spengler. Not wide to Curry. So much young talent on this Tormenta squad. Curry, good work against Nate Schultz, who recovers well, though. Ball falls right back to Spengler. Evan Lee helping out. Gets back to Curry. He can strike them from distance. Dalmeida. It's a nice ball in and a lovely dummy by Fonseca de Vivas. Fonseca, the man from Brazil. Two South Americans 
teaming up nicely so far. That one's going to be a foul on Sebastian Vivas. 27-year-old leads the team with seven shots. Ian Cameron, as you see there, bottom left in your screen, there he is, the Scotsman. Always a great chat midweek. He said Vivas has an unbridled passion to compete and win, paired with a really good instinct for where the ball might arrive for scoring opportunities. Chapa Herrera now. A late off-season signing by Rick Wright. So just off, just past the toe of Castro. Chapa Herrera's signing came at the recommendation of Sebastian Velasquez, who spent several years in USL Championship. Start here with a throw from Tyler Pollock. It's been a KG first 25 minutes here in Tormenta. State in Statesboro, I should say. Tormenta with the better of the early chances. Mostly thanks to Gunther Rankenberg's sloppy hands. Here's Zakowski with the left footed ball in, looking for McKinnon. Can't find him though. Now a chance for Tormenta to break, but then they turn over. Hayden Anderson now. And take up, doing good work back, and he's going to earn the foul. Hayden Hansen a little frustrated there, but good body work by the Brazilian. Going back to that Louisville game for Greenville. Rick Wright said he did think about going to the back four, but he ended up matching up with them, which he think they did well. And then Lee even got time at the back a little bit. Zion Scarlett came off the bench. We'll probably see him again tonight off the bench. So Chapa Herrera had about 90 touches in that game. His comfort level is increasing with his new side. I asked him about the Hayden Anderson goal, which the replay didn't look like it came off Hayden Anderson, but he was claiming it. Rick Wright said no, no one really knows who scored it, but Hayden is adamant that it was him. He did get credit for it in the end. Nate Schultz now hooks this one away. Stick with us at halftime. We'll have a replay. Maybe a couple of replays of that late Northern Colorado goal yesterday. Certainly a big debate about whether that ball went in and who put it in. It's credited to Ethan Horde in the end. Hailstorm came away with the late point. Chattanooga's home opener. Of course, Noko are going to have to wait a few more weeks for their home opener. We had a yellow card off camera there. For Chapa Herrera. So Herrera's fourth of the season. A stat that'll worry Rick Wright. That ball's headed in, headed away by Lee. One more yellow card. And Chapo Herrera will receive a fine. He gets to eight, he will be suspended. He's the only member of the Greenville Triumph team with multiple yellow cards. Nobody else has one or zero. Going to get a long throw in here from Nick Okoto. Not a ton of room on the sideline here in Statesboro. It's a little too high up in the air from Okoto and headed away by a man who does know how to do long throw-ins, Hayden Anderson. We haven't got to see one yet. And there apparently there was a foul on the play. Our referee tonight, Marco Maric, in the mid-50s in Statesboro. See some few players with the long sleeves tonight. Here's the end of spring here. Jamie Smith. In the turn, Spengler. He goes down, another free kick for the Triumph. As I mentioned at halftime, the Jägermeister Cup. Don't forget to stick around for all the information about that with the balanced League One schedule this year. Only 22 league games for each team, which is down obviously quite a bit from previous seasons, but I think a lot of clubs will be happy to have the balanced schedule. Where everybody plays each other home and away. So the fill-in there, we will have Jägermeister Cup games starting next weekend. Zukowski 
Right footed ball in towards the far post. Schultz is there, knocks it back across, but nobody in the vicinity for Greenville. Claimed by Ford Parker. Two Greenville players went for it. it perhaps have been better if one of them had stuck around in the middle of the box. Ford Parker was happy he didn't and claimed easily. to cup a World Cup style tournament there will be groups followed by a knockout round these two teams are in the same East group as this ball's lifted high for Curry Smith over to hoof it away Charlotte Greenville Richmond and South Georgia in their group they will, each club will play each other twice as well as two matches against other groups or clubs from other groups I should say they will get eight games in group plays. That will get each team to 30 games. Obviously, the in-season in cup games do not count towards the regular season standing. Unlike the NBA. Pollock now goes all the way back to Gunther Rankenberg. Past the half-hour mark here in States. But Ross Devonport with you. Thanks for joining us tonight for the wrap-up of USL League One Week 7. All over the top, looking for Leo Castro. He's had a quiet night so far tonight. Greenville haven't been able to unlock this tormented back four since that lovely ball over the top to McKinnon earlier. That was a lot earlier. With that said, Greenville's back three. Had a couple of scary moments, but other than that, been pretty steady. Matches that finish tied in the Eggermaster Cup will go directly to a penalty shootout. The winners will earn an extra point. Shootout losers will still earn that point as Parker comes out to clear downfield over the head of Ian Cameron. Siskowski finds Herrera. He'll go wide to Hayden Anderson. Perhaps a chance here for Greenville to create something. Back to Herrera. Mentioned some of Greenville's injuries. Brandon Bricky, Sebastian Velasquez, Mohamed Say still yet to hit, make his Greenville debut. The rookie out of Clemson. He was dealing with a knee injury coming into the season. We'll get to more injury stuff in a second. Here's Zakowski. He's turned back by, Fon excuse me, not Fonseca, by Connor Doyle. Now a chance. Hayden Anderson to the left side of the box. Beats his mark against the cross. In Parker drops it. Leo Castro is there to finish. We saw some mistakes down the other end by Gunther Rankenberg, but instead it's Ford Parker with the gaff and Leo Castro there to clean up for his third goal of the season. My oh my, Ford Parker's been so good this season. Anderson beat Callum Stretch to the byline, across came in and that's poor from Ford Parker. He got both hands on it, it was a simple grab in the end for any professional goalkeeper. Instead he drops it, Leo Castro he won't score too many easier goals than that from one yard out. The veteran Colombian, he had two goals in their last meeting last season in the 2-1 win. Adds to that total here. We get the first goal in the Peach State Derby 2024. Certainly against the overall run of play. Ford Parker hadn't had a ton to do until that moment. And it's 1-0 Greenville. Aiden Anderson again, the creator of that goal. He gets pulled back, and that might be our first yellow card for Tormenta tonight, and it is, as Conor Doyle ends up in the book of Marco Maric. Maric will not let Aiden Anderson take this one quickly. We saw Greenville be the beneficiary of another goalkeeping mistake earlier this season. Slip through the hands of backup Lexington backup goalkeeper. And Amal Knight got sent off in that 3 2 win. That was a crazy game, that 3 2 win over Lexington. Nico Camposano with that error. Now another one for Greenville, a bit of an early, another early Christmas present for them, but they won't care. They look to maintain their place at the top of the USL League One table. 
So a free kick here. A chance perhaps to swing one in. Liam McKinnon out there along with Tyler Pollock. Will be McKinnon swinging in right footed. Decent delivery, but not it away. That's going to be a handball. And Tavio Dalmeida now an even more dangerous free kick here. <laughs> Tyler Pollock <laughs> thinks about taking it quickly. Ryan McKinnon can crack them, as can Leo Castro, Sebastian Velasquez. Jamie Smith wants a piece of this. <laughs> Leo Castro is going to try and talk him out of it. Jamie Smith turned into such a villain, especially to Lexington fans this season as well as last season with late goals. It looks like he will give a crack at it here. Coming out of NC State. Sikowski also behind the ball here. Four-man wall. Jamie Smith with the delivery. It's a good one. Not enough pace in it, though, to trouble for Parker this time. As he makes the easy save. Neither the pace or direction from Jamie Smith there to beat Ford Parker. See this is offside. Under 10 minutes remaining here in the first half. Greenville with the one they'll lead at the moment over Tormenta. Goal by Leo Castro. That came in the 33rd minute of a Terrible mistake by Four Parker, who got such a great start this season. Certainly saved Tormenta a number of points up until this point. Has some quality saves as Pollack's going to chase this one down. Select the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. Spengler now with the turnover. And that's going to be a, a dangerous foul here as Daniel Wu takes down the rookie, and he'll receive a yellow card for his troubles. Second Greenville player in the book now. It's Daniel Wu's first card of the season. I'm sure there was much in that. I think Schultz perhaps got away with more contact than anything. You see Daniel Wu looks a bit shocked. Jamie Smith perhaps asking for the initial foul on Schultz, but now a dangerous free kick here for Tormenta. It's a little close in, but enough to the side that Fonseca certainly fancies himself a chance here at the equalizer in the 38th minute. I'm not sure if that wall is 10 yards back. We have a Slightly funny angle here. Fonseca now with the right foot. Curls it just over the bar of Gunther Rankenberg. Rankenberg was over there in plenty of time. I think perhaps may have been able to get a hand on it if he needed to. But just not enough dip on that one from Fonseca. And we remain 1 0 here. It's green to play it out from the back once again. Jamie Smith will just go long, looking for some targets. Finds Leo Castro, goes down under pressure. No whistle, though, from referee Maris. Now a chance for Spengler. Heavenly all over him. No call, though. May have been advantage. We didn't see it quite out of shot there. Connor Doyle out wide to Okoto. Nice little one-two between him and Fonseca. Okoto will keep it in. So might have had most of their success down this right side so far tonight. And onside is Fonseca. Back to his left foot. Back to his right foot. Fonseca again with the right foot. is shot, but right into the arms. Of Rankenberg. And he'll wisely slow things down. This game has had spurts of action. Rankenberg, the man out of Marietta, Georgia, 24 years old. Played his college ball at Georgia State. Had a couple of appearances last year in relief of Greenville starter Jared Mazzola, who's now up in the USL Championship with Sacramento. Here's Dengler. Zukowski only manages to get a toe on it and falls to the feet of Spengler. Levis under pressure from Wu. Now double teamed. He goes back to Dalmeida. Dengler. Greenville continue their press. 
Wentz have done a good job with dealing it though so far for the most part. McKinnon now is looking for Jamie Smith of all people in the channel. He'll jog back now to his center back spot after Jake Dangler took it away from him. XG is very close so far. Tormenta 0.21, Greenville 0.19. Tormenta with the six shots, two Greenville's three. Possession 54.7% in favor of Greenville. Spengler now turns on the Jets. Good work back by Chapa Herrera from his defensive midfield role. Jeff Herrera with a U.S. Open Cup goal this year against Knoxville. Rinkenberg smashes this one into the States for a night. Looked a little hopeful at first, but Castro was around there, and now it comes to the feet of Herrera. Sikowski out wide to Schultz. Poor first touch there from Castro, but he manages to get it right back to his right wing back. Smith. He'll go long, looking for Hayden Anderson. That was a great ball. Okoto to just knock it away for a throw-in. So we're inside the last five minutes of the first half here from Statesboro. Greenville Triumph with a 1-0 lead, thanks to one of the easiest goals Leo Castro will ever score, thanks to the mistake by Ford Parker. Here's a chance to see our first long throw from Hayden Anderson, as we mentioned. Similar to Furman's to Paladin Stadium, not a ton of room on the side here in Statesboro. That's a good one, though, flicked on by Wu. Bouncing around some aerial duels. Wu still chasing it down, which means he's out of position now. Thankfully for him, Tyler Pollock with a touch. But now a chance for Spengler to get on the transition here. Skips past Anderson. He's looking for Corey, but good work pinching in by Nate Schultz. But there was a foul behind the play, perhaps. Referee Marco Maric has blown his whistle. And will come back for a tormentor free kick somewhere. See if we can take a look at it on the replay here. I'm not sure if it was. Oh, it might have been for the late tackle by Polak from behind. Just over the halfway line. It was perhaps a wise foul. It was a professional foul for Tyler Polak, and he will receive a yellow card for his troubles. It's his second yellow card of the season for the veteran. Lovely turn by Vivas. Thinking about striking it. Daniel Wu was in the way. Spengler now. Out wide to Curry. Heavy touch, though. Schultz does a good job of ensuring Jackson Curry doesn't get a shot away. Schultz will clear. Well, apparently it went over the end line for a corner kick. It wasn't kept in in the end by Schultz and Conor Doyle will jog over to take this corner. Doyle played in the MLS with DC United as well as Colorado Rapids, 59 MLS appearances. Captain tonight swings this one in right footed towards the far post. Schultz will just hack this one away. As Greenville tried to take this 1 0 lead to the break. Just joining his 33rd minute goal by Leo Castro, the difference so far in this one. Certainly been a tight first half. Tormenta have looked the better team in possession. Passing accuracy in the opponent's half is 20% better than Greenville so far, but they haven't been able to trouble Rankenberg too much. Maybe a chance here. Okoto knocks it in. Rankenberg's there to claim inside his six-yard box. He had a couple of fumbles early, but it was Ford Parker's fumble that led to the Leo Castro goal. Greenville with just the two shots on target so far. Tormenta with three. Last shot on target for Tormenta came back in the 21st minute from Sebastian Vivas. 
As down goes Nick Okoto under the challenge of Hayden Anderson. He's had his hands full tonight as Hayden Anderson on that left side with Nick Okoto. Man from South Miami. Tormenta will get a free kick here midway inside the Greenville half. A chance to get this one into the box, perhaps cause some chaos. So Spengler will take it as we wind down with 20 seconds remaining here in the first half from Statesboro. There's a look at Asmir Spengler. Tied for first chance is created on this team coming into tonight. He'll deliver this one left footed. It's a decent delivery headed away by either Leo Polak. I'm not sure who quite got there. Curry now looking to find an opportunity to shoot. Instead, he crosses it in. Hacked away, shanked away, I'll say. By Nate Schultz, is one of the smallest ball boys in League One history. <laughs> Chucks that one over to the corner for Connor Doyle. We'll just have one minute of added time here at the end of the first half. Connor Doyle again with the corner. Fifth corner of the night for Tormenta. Can they find a late equalizer here? Doyle goes short. Tons of space is Spengler. His cross comes in, headed away by Anderson. Curry can't control. Now a long distance shot that's deflected over. Came off a Tormenta play and that may do it. For the first half here, Rankin, will Rankenberg get a chance to take the goal kick? Looks like he will. Should be the last action of the first 45 minutes. And he will not get a chance to take the goal kick. And Leo Castro, that man in your picture right there, his goal is the difference in this one, his 35, 33rd minute strike. It wasn't much of a strike, it was more of a tap. As he Capitalized on a mistake by Ford Parker as they're playing for that Peach States Derby Trophy tonight. These two teams, home and away, they will have games, but at the break here in this first matchup, it's the Greenville Triumph with a 1-0 lead over South Georgia Tormenta thanks to this goal. Created, created by Hayden Anderson and handed on a plate by Ford Parker to Leo Castro. Do you still know how to fix one of these things? Bullock man. I'm building a team. Are you in? I think Blue Lightning will want to come too. You guys looking for real speed? Hey, smart board. When you're done fixing that, Bullock kind of needs your help. Try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The clubhouse in Statesboro, Southeast Georgia's best place to play. Clubhouse in Statesboro, where fun is done. Optum Health System's commitment to you has not changed. Unmatched safety and compassionate care. Others may talk about the new normal, but at Optum Health System, we've always provided high quality, personalized care safely. If you have recently delayed your care, we want to reassure you we are prepared to care for you. Our absolute commitment to safe, high quality, personalized care is stronger than ever. We welcome you back to Optum Health System. Greenville Triumph with a 1 0 lead here against South Georgia Tormenta at the break. Well, let's take a look at some of our action from earlier in week seven in USL League One. Our first game we're going to take a look at is the second edition of Richmond against Spokane. They played early this year in Washington. This was the second and final League One meeting between these two teams this season. Romain Metanier. The veteran French fullback, he scored in last month's meeting with Richmond, continued his hot streak against the kickers as he finishes off this chance past Pablo Haro in the 32nd minute. And Andre Lewis, all he does is score bangers. What a strike there. He had a midweek one 
sent his team's Open Cup tie against Las Vegas into extra time. The Jamaican then followed that up with that beautiful strike as Spokane wins this one 2-0 to join Greenville at the top with 10 points. Next to Chattanooga, the game I brought you last night. The home opener finally for the Red Bulls. Mali Mayel Malango rounds Lalo Delgado, drops it back to guess who else? Rapapa Mensa, last week's player of the week. He gets the scoring started. Superb ball from Jamil Roberts to start that one off. We would have to wait till the death for the second goal in this one. And there are questions if it was actually a goal or not. Corner comes in, appears to be cleared off the line, chested off the line, and then grabbed by TJ Bush. Nobody really knew who scored. They gave it in the end to the Hailstorm. That's all that matters. And 1-1 one, one there as the Hailstorm pull out a point on the road in Chattanooga. Well, stick with us here. We'll be right back with a look at the Open, U.S. Open Cup scores from games featuring League One teams this past midweek, as well as the upcoming schedule for the next round in May, plus a preview of the in-season Jägermeister Cup halftime here in Tormenta. Greenville with a 1-0 lead over South Georgia. When termites show up, So do we. Terminix it. Uh, I want it now. I got it. This man's on fire! Oh, my goodness! Brittany, walk out of the shot! He scores! Breaks through. doesn't care who you are or why you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. This is where he reeks. Jennings, 1v1! Got under it. Level! New Mexico! Looks great. Termites show up? So do we. Terminix it. Hi, I'm Michelle Smith Lake from Kids World Learning Center here in Statesboro, Georgia. Let us take care of all of your child care needs here at Kids World Learning Center, from your infants all the way to your after schoolers. We also have a summer camp and holiday camp for those older children. And we have our brand new bus for our field trips for the children to have fun and to learn and to explore new things all around our beautiful county. Thank you for trusting us with your most prized possession. Welcome back to Halftime here in Statesboro. Well, we've reached the round of 32 of the US Open Cup, final eight USL Championship clubs, as well as the eight MLS, eight MLS clubs will join the competition in the next round. Let's take a look back at this past week's Previous round, we had three USL League One teams advancing, two of them listed right here, South Georgia Tormenta, as well as the Independents, Greenville and Richmond falling, unfortunately. Here's some of the other scores from midweek. Chattanooga took Birmingham of the USL Championship to extra time, but they couldn't pull it off. The Hailstorm dropped a close one to Tulsa. Omaha, another one of the League One sides advancing. They advanced on penalties in Spokane. Almost defeated the Las Vegas Lights, but they will depart in their first ever entrance into this competition. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule. This is on Tuesday, May 7th. As you see there, Charlotte Independence taking on MLS's Atlanta United. That should be an exciting one of some other great matchups featuring MLS clubs as well as USL Championship clubs there. And we obviously have the second day of competition in this round of 32. That'll be Wednesday, May 8th. Tormenta there, visiting the Red Hot Charleston Battery. One of the better USL championship sides. North Carolina FC, former League One side. That's the Super Cup there, the two defending champions from USL League One and 
the USL Championship and Union Omaha get to play the MLS of MLS's Sporting Kansas City. Speaking of cups, one of this year's most exciting new events is the USL Jägermeister Cup. This in-season cup competition features USL League One teams in a World Cup style tournament that is sure to thrill fans. So with each team playing a balanced 22-game USL League One schedule, we're going to have to fill in with some games, and this is what we'll fill in with. USL Jägermeister Cup games, as you see, starting in about seven, six days, April 27th next weekend, Spokane hosting Fuego, Greenville hosting Richmond, Tormenta hosting the Independence, Rebels hosting Knoxville, and Lexington hosting Madison. These are all group games, and the qualifications will happen after that to the group stage. We'll stick with us. Up next, Team of the Week, Halftime Stats, Highlights, and more here from Statesboro. Are you suffering from hip or knee pain? Don't let the pain hold you back. The region's most experienced robotic joint replacement team at Optum Health System offers an individually tailored approach that is more precise and creates smaller incisions. For you, that can mean a faster recovery with less pain. Your comeback starts here. Call today to find out if robotic assisted joint replacement is right for you. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, will be to save Bullock County from slow internet. To do so, you must recruit an exceptional tech team. They must be fast, reliable and absolutely fearless. Time is of the essence. Bullock's internet is dependent on your success. Try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Savannah Hilton Head International, you can choose from 11 different airlines, including Southwest Airlines, Breeze Airways, and Avello Airlines. With up to 70 daily nonstop departures and over 30 nonstop destinations, Savannah Hilton Head International gives you more choices for a travel plan that fits your needs. Savannah Hilton Head International. Visit flysav.com. The Clubhouse in Statesboro, Southeast Georgia's best place to play. The Clubhouse in Statesboro, where fun is done. Beautiful shot of the moon here in Statesboro. Appropriate as the team in the lunar kits are up 1-0 at the break. Greenville Triumph with a gift of goal from Ford Parker to Leo Castro in the 33rd minute. We'll get to our highlights and stats in a minute. But first, let's take a look at our week six team of the week. Bro Papa Mensa had another goal yesterday for Chattanooga. Will he end up on team of the week again? Stephen DeSantis, what a goal he had end up there as well. Austin Pack helped defeat Greenville 1-0. That earned him a spot in between the pipes on the team of the week as well. well let's take a look at how we got to this 1-0 lead for the Greenville Triumph in the first 45 from Statesboro. Tomanta had the better of the early play. This was a great chance early for Vivas. Gunther Rankenberg standing tall with the leg save there. Kick save and a beauty to deny Vivas. Nick Okoto had a lovely first half down that right wing from the fullback spot. Rankenberg half fumbled that one. Also got himself in trouble a few minutes later on this claim where he dropped it again. Vivas there, but Rankenberg just happened to fall in the right place. And fumbles in this first half will be a theme. As here's the opening goal. Hayden Anderson with a little touch pass to Okoto. Gets past Callum Stretch as well. Chips it a ball in. Had some pace on it, but Ford Parker, a professional goalkeeper, really should do better there. He drops it, and the ball drops to the feet of Leo Castro, who scores on the volley from a yard or two out to get us to the 1-0 scoreline at the break here. 
Your look at your halftime stats. Tormenta leading in the shot department. Seven to three as well as on target. Three to two. Rankenberg didn't have to do a ton other than that big save where he stood up to stop Sebastian Vivas. We'll see if Tormenta can get things going in the second half. It's four of six games this season in League One that Tormenta have failed to score in the first half. Most of their recent goals have come in US Open Cup action. Except for that 3-0 win over Lexington last time out in the league. That was a couple of weeks ago, though. And it's only had those half chances in the first half. They weren't able to find the back of the net. The Peach States Derby is what we're playing for here between these two sides. There's the overall history. Obviously, the Peach States Derby just started last season, but this is the longest series in League One history. As you can see, Tormenta have dominated. We mentioned we went 10 games without Greenville winning a game until the end of last season. The team with the most points from the regular season matches between the two teams will be awarded the Peach State's Derby Trophy, which we saw in the Open. They only play each other two times this season, obviously, with the balanced schedule. No playoff matches or Open Cup matches are included. If the teams are tied in points at the end of the season, the first tiebreaker is goal scored. The second tiebreaker will be away goal scored. See if Tomeda can get back into this one. It's Connor Doyle, tonight's captain for the home team. We'll let you know if we have any changes at the break. A little deeper into the stats. Tomenta with 15 total dribbles. Greenville only attempted one. Tomenta have been very effective technically with the ball at their feet. But obviously that man right there is the difference so far. Greenville with 15 tackles in that first half to Tormenta's one. So some very lopsided stats, interestingly, in the first half here in Statesboro. Greenville get us going with the long ball. Hayden Anderson will get credited with the assist for that goal, though he should, because it was his ball that was fumbled by Ford Parker. And here goes Fonseca. He manages to keep that one in. Looking to take on Tyler Pollock. He's got Okoto on the overlap, as he has all night. Okoto with a cross in. It's a good one. Nate Schultz for not the first time tonight is there to rescue his team. Nate Schultz with an impressive first half. Getting off to a good start here in the second half. All right, fans, that's a Tormenta corner kick. Stop! Schultz had six tackles in the first, attempted six tackles in the first half, more than any other player on the pitch. A timely interception there, but it results in a corner here which Spengler will take. The rookie out of USF. Swinging in with his left foot. Headed away at the front post by Evan Lee. Knocked back in, bouncing around there. He's on the, on the toe of Pedro Fonseca for just a split second, but he couldn't control it. And Gunther Rankelberg will slow things down. Doesn't like to kick long, Rankenberg. Sure that's under instructions from Rick Wright as they like to build from the back. Herrera, Jamie Smith. He will go long and for the big target of Castro. Uh, Jake Denk, I think it was Preston Kilwine, excuse me, draped all over him. And Columbia earns himself a free kick just inside the Tormenta half. Zakowski, relatively quiet in the first half tonight, our player to watch. And Schultz, looking for Castro in the channel. Pass was too heavy and Dengler will come away with it. Jake Dengler, the only man remaining from the championship campaign two years ago. That's a great ball for Curry. Knocks it off the back of Smith, back to himself. You can see Spengler and Curry only played a few games together, but they've created a nice little partnership in the Tormenta midfield. Work there by Chapa Herrera. Cleared away and then knocked out. Not for a throw though. Curry keeps it in. Spengler. Evan Lee harassing him. Lovely turn by Spengler. And again, Spengler dancing around Greenville players. That's a, well, it looked like a good tackle from Jamie Smith. He's incensed at that decision. And I could understand why. And some interesting decisions with contact tonight by referee Marco Maric and that's the latest one looked like Jamie Smith 
had position on Spengler. We'll take another look at it here. Got the ball. Spengler just fell over Smith's leg. It will be a free kick now here for Tormenta. Connor Dola take it a few yards outside the box, as well as a few yards from the corner flag. It's basically a corner. Just a little closer in and a better angle for Connor Doyle. See if he can cause some havoc here with this delivery. The captain goes far post, looking for the head of Okoto, who is there to knock it away. And it will be another corner here, second of the half for That's Tormenta. Tormenta corner kick. Make some noise! Spangler to take again. Corners are racking up now for Tormenta. Swings it in, headed away by Leo Castro now playing some defense. Curry will come to retrieve it. Back to Spengler, first time cross him with the left foot, almost falls to the feet of Callum Stretch. Able under pressure here in these first five minutes of the second half. Finding it tough to clear their lines. Okoto continues to be a menace down this right side. This is the feet of Dalmeida, back to Okoto. Quite the athlete, Nick, o Nick Okoto, but that one went out for a throw. And the height and the athleticism. See right there in his green tracksuit top. First year Greenville coach after the departure of John Harks. That one is out of play. Well, late whistle. Certainly went out of play. Callum, excuse me, Liam McKinnon. Do, do a ton in the first half other than an early chance. Just two touches in the opponent's box in that first half for Liam McKinnon. You can certainly do damage from outside the box though as well, as we've seen. Spangler with the outside the left foot. That pass is short, intercepted by Schultz. And a chance here for Chapa Herrera. The ball just doesn't really bounce his way. And Connor Doyle with the physical domination there. Spengler, the outside of the foot. That's a lovely ball for Curry. Into the left side of the box. He's got Fonseca in the middle, tries to find him. Awesome work by Tyler Polak. Could be in position to deny that quality goal scoring chance. Perhaps an opportunity for Greenville to break. This one falls to Zakowski, our player to watch tonight. Looks for McKinnon, but that one's going to bounce out of play. Just Tyler Pollack pitching in from his left center back spot to help out there on the right hand side. The first signing in Greenville history, Tyler Pollack still with the team. Six seasons later. That's great work by Herrera to dispossess Spengler. Schultz now. He'll deliver a right footed cross. That wasn't the best, but it falls to the line. McKinnon, and it's just wide of Ford Parker's right hand post. That's what Liam McKinnon can do with a ball at his feet and even half a yard of space. There's the mistake by Dengler that allowed the ball to get to McKinnon. And that could easily have been 2 0. Good ball in by Schultz, but Dengler made a complete mess of it. Teams with good early chances here to find the back of the net in the second half from Statesboro. Tyler Pollock now is going to have to chase back for Nick Okoto. Good work again by Pollock just to get in the way of a much taller and stronger Nick Okoto. But not many wiser than Tyler Pollock. Doyle. Looking for options. Dengler. Spengler, excuse me. Okoto. All the way back to Dangler, who spread it wide for Kilwine. Kilwine with some space now. He's going to have a crack with his left foot from distance, but that was never a troubling gun for Rankenberg. So some good action for both sides in the final thirds here. First seven minutes, eight minutes of this second half. Justin Kilwine got some power behind that, but not the direction. 
Ryan McKinnon with that last shot. 18 shots in League One this season, the most in the league. Here he is again on the ball. Chapa. Zukowski. McKinnon was looking for Castro. Run it away by Kilwine. Anderson. Battling with Fonseca. He just comes over to help him, and Fonseca wins the battle. Anderson tracks back though well. Samantha with now twice as many shots as Greenville, eight to four, but the XG is exactly the same, 0.29 for each. Finn is going to pressure Dangle now. Veteran does well, finds the other veteran, Doyle. That's a delightful ball on the back door for Okoto. His first time cross. Can't beat Tyler Pollack though once again. The veteran in the right place at the right time. Callum Stretch. Callum Stretch, the man for Los Angeles is this one. Flies by Hankenberg's far post. Callum Stretch, he played for Aston Villa as a youth. They had a win today in the Premier League. He played there with Sheffield United striker Cameron Archer. He went from Villa to Sheffield United for 18 million pounds. Stretch started that 3 0 win over Lexington last time out in League One. Plays for the Puerto Rican national team. Jamie Smith now. Space to run. He's looking for a run of Chapa Herrera. That will fall to the feet of Evan Lee. And his first touch lets him down. Now a chance for Tormenta to perhaps take advantage. That's a good bit of body work from Evan Lee. Down goes Spengler. It was certainly a bit of accidental, as you can see. <laughs> what Vivas was saying it was a loose arm by Evan Lee, but I think purely accidental. Let's take another look at it here. Evan Lee with great work. Perhaps hooked Spengler a little bit with the left arm. Perhaps in a blind spot by the referee, but I don't think there was a foul called on the play. It'll be a drop ball for Greenville it's in the 56th minute here from Statesboro. Leo Castro's 33rd minute goal, the difference so far in this one. There is the drop ball to the feet of Tyler Pollock. Typo to his friends. Herrera now with the lovely turn. Long ball looking for Leo Castro. That's a good bit of defensive work by Stretch. They will maintain possession. Hayden Anderson from his left wing back spot. Cutting in. Finds Herrera. Castro. All the way back to Daniel Wu. He's got to be careful here under pressure from Fonseca. Daniel Wu has looked composed tonight, has not made a mistake in replace of Captain Brandon Fricky. Pull in for Castro. It was a good one. A good touch by Stretch. Zakowski there to clean up, though. Right side of the box. Looking to turn Jackson Curry and does so beautifully. Zakowski with it again. More magic from the, the Monmouth man. Back to Schultz. His left footed cross is a good one. Taylor Nansen. Thought he was going to crack it on the volley, instead back to his left foot. And in the end, Nick Okoto across with the block. That will be a corner for the triumph, the first one in a while. Only their third of the night. Ryan McKinnon will come over to take it. The man from Switzerland had a four goal game last season. The winner over Chattanooga in June. Here's the delivery, front post looking for Castro. Seeking the flick, and instead just nods it out for a goal kick. Ryan McKinnon, a three time all biggie selection at Villanova. Eventually got hurt in the second half of last season. Certainly not as strong in that second half as he was in the first half. Now there's a chance for Tormenta, Spengler. Looking to take on Jamie Smith. Finds Vivas in the middle. He's got Fonseca. He goes wide. Nick Okoto with the first time cross. Evan Lee's there to knock it away from Fonseca. And then Dalmeida's effort is out into the construction site. Okoto perhaps had a little more time than he thought on that ball. 
Mariners continue their hard work. Greenville looking to play it out from the back again. Risky business sometimes. Jamie Smith. Goes long as he has done a ton tonight. That's a delightful ball for Nate Schultz. He'll keep it in. The wing back, but equally good work by Jackson Curry with the body, and that will roll out for a goal kick. Ian Cameron talked about Jackson Curry and what he can do on the defensive side of things. Talked about all the changes that Ian Cameron made. He said it was a slow start to the preseason. We're figuring out this new group, its competencies, what they can and can't do. So sort of feeling out progress. Interception there by Anderson. Chapa Herrera. will go along now. Looking for McKinnon. Connor Doyle there. I have a sloppy pass from him. Good work by Stretch to clean up. So we have a stoppage in play. Stuck with us at halftime. You would have seen the US Open Cup matchups. For all the USL League One team still remaining in the competition. That's three of them. Tormenta We'll travel to the Charleston Battery. Charlotte will take on MLS's Atlanta United. This is Jamie Smith down. That's a pain. And then Union Omaha will take on Sporting Kansas City. Obviously, Union Omaha had that great run a couple of years ago in the US Open Cup. Jamie Smith trying to get back to his feet. Union Omaha were knocked out by Sporting Kansas City back in 2022. I won't mention the score, just to spare Bujos' blushes. It was a great run all the way to the quarterfinals. Tough Minnesota United. Chicago fire on penalty in previous rounds. So we've got two US, two MLS scalps, couldn't get the third. Here's Spangler now, inside of Vivas. Doyle. Crosses it in, but knocked away by Wu. Oh, Connor Doyle might have a crack from distance there. Finding the back of the net lately, the veteran. This effort blocked by Evan Lee. Greenville will clear. Evan Lee, such a composed veteran leader in the midfield. Really embrace this defensive midfield role. Jamie Smith now. McKinnon with some space, but not tackling himself. Turf Monster got him, but it comes back to McKinnon. McKinnon now with the left foot. It's not far past the left hand post of the sprawling forward Parker. A warning shot there, perhaps, for the home team. for our first substitution in this one. Now a chance for Fonseca. He's got inside Polak. Wu comes over to help. Fonseca with a far post ball. Curry's there, but it just had a little too much weight on it for him to perhaps create a scoring chance. Spengler back to Dalmeida. Doyle now. Lakota. He chips one across. A beautiful acrobatic effort by Fonseca, but he couldn't get it on target. And the story of the night for Tormenta. Final quality of the ball just hasn't been quite good enough. Trouble Gunther Rankenberg consistently as he looks for a clean sheet here. So both these teams coming off midweek games in the US Open Cup. So perhaps some tired legs out there for certain individuals. Chapa Herrera now with acres of space. Almeida comes over to give him half a look. Chapa Herrera still goes out, or goes on. Schultz now, back to Herrera. He's clattered into by Dalmeida. A 
looks like we will get our first substitution of the evening. And it will be Pascal Corvino in for Evan Lee. It's a pretty like-for-like -like swap at the defensive midfield spot. Solid night for Evan Lee. Recent father. Wright said he saw a change in him after he became a dad. Really adding to his responsibilities. And here comes Pascal Corvino, the rookie out of Missouri State. Played there with Jack Denton, Josh Dolling, and Javier Martin Hill, all with Spokane out of that program. And Missouri State, as here comes the long ball in, and this time Ford Parker makes no mistake and claims that one. Pascal Covino also played at USS USC Upstate in South Carolina alongside current teammate Hayden Anderson. Covino originally from Italy, born in Switzerland though. Oh, a good bit of interplay. Here's Covino on the ball now. Gives that one away to Okoto. Now a chance for Dalmeida to break. Spengler slides it through. Back to Dalmeida. Corvino is there. But I don't think he got a touch on it. Just a shot wide by Dalmeida. Nice little bit of one two play. But once again, there's not enough clinicality in that final third. Gunther Rankelberg will take his time here with the goal kickers. He will continue to play it out from the back. Daniel Wu directing traffic. Finds feet as Akowski gets clipped by Dalmeida. Referee Marich will have a word with the midfielder. Man, as you mentioned, out of the Ivory Coast. Well, he has two yellow cards this season. Won't get his third here. So we're past the 65th minute mark now in Statesboro. Ross Devonport with you, Greenville. With the 1 0 lead thanks to that 33rd minute goal from Leo Castro. One thing I'll be sure, Ford Parker will not be watching the replay of that goal tonight on social media. There's the 225s battle, Dangler versus Castro. Castro wins for now. We'll pull in for Zikowski off his thigh. And now for a goal kick. Both of these teams will be Eager Meister Cup action. Greenville Triumph will take on the Richmond Kickers. See one of the oldest rivalries along with this one in USL League One. It'll be Saturday at 7 p.m. from Paladin Stadium. As that one goes out of play for a Greenville throw midway inside the Tormenta half. Schultz now, taking on Spengler. Schultz goes down looking for the free kick, doesn't get it. <laughs> and then just clatters into Spengler. That's going to be at least a talking to from referee Marich. Luke Schultz, lucky to get away without being shown a card there. South Georgia Tormenta will be back here on Saturday hosting the Charlotte Independents. Charlotte with a nil-nil draw yesterday. Here's another look at it here from... I think Schultz was trying to get the ball. It's just a little clumsy in the end. Spengler goes over. Just past the halfway mark now here in the second half. Can Tormenta find their way back into this one and tie things up? Still yet to make a substitution, Ian Cameron. Stretch. Good step by Daniel Wu. 
And then Herrera gives it away, but Corvino gets it right back. Not much room in this midfield at the moment. Dalmera with a pull back on Herrera, and that's going to be a yellow card. That's the second one in a row from behind by Tavio Dalmeda. As he enters referee Marco, referee Marco Maric's book. And lost possession, then just hooked Herrera twice. Lost the hands up. That's his third yellow card of the season for Tavio Dalmeda. back to his goalkeeper, Gunther Rankenberg. Jackson Curry. He's vanished a little bit in this game in the offensive end. Almost a delightful ball through. But Daniel Wu once again with the step up to intercept. Now here's Curry with a chance to redeem himself. Vivas. Nice ball back to Spengler. Back into Vivas. The Argentinian, Makoto, goes wide to Callum, stretch, who does manage to keep it in with a stretch. That's a decent ball in, by the way, by Schultz, and it will be out for a Tormenta corner. In the 70th minute of play, we have four and there's going to be a ton of substitutions for, for the home team. Looks like we might have four at once. Substitution. Entering the match, number three, Josh Ramos. Exiting the match, number 11, Jackson Corey. Ramos Second for Corey is the first Entering one. Entering the match, number eight, Daniel Steedman. Exiting the match, number 19, Tavio Dalmeida. Steedman in for Dalmeida. 16, Mason Tunbridge entering the match. Exiting the match, number 10, Pedro Fonseca. And Tunbridge in for Fonseca. Substitution, number 17, entering the match, Gabby Rodriguez. Exiting the match, number 9, Sebastian Vivas. So four substitutions at once for Ian Cameron. This is the delivery in on the corner. Jamie Smith with a good header away. Ryan McKinnon just knocks it down the pitch. Connor Doyle now. That's a lovely ball wide. Mason Tunbridge, Spangler now. Here's Tunbridge again. We'll get to the tactical thoughts behind those substitutions in a minute. Now a chance for Greenville to break. Schultz slows things down wisely. So Ramos, Steeman, Tunbridge. And Rodriguez on. Gabriel Rodriguez with two goals and assists already this season. Former Tormenta two man. Mason Tunbridge with a goal as well already this season. Tunbridge is a big body. Joshua Ramos now, the US Virgin Islands national team player. Spangler looking for the return ball. Didn't get it. It'll be smashed away by Greenville as they try to catch their breath here. Game Rodriguez on, as you mentioned, Tunbridge, Steedman, In and Ramos. In the 72nd minute of play, we have one substitution for Greenville Triumph. Entering the match, number 17, Zion Scarlett. Now it's Exiting the Greenville's match, turn to, to make a change. Nate Schultz. As Nate Schultz makes way. For Zion Scarlett. May result in Greenville going to a back four, perhaps. See where Hay Hayden Anderson goes, because Zion Scarlett is certainly more of a winger than a true wing back. He goes to the left side where Schultz was. We'll keep you updated in a minute on that. Looks like Anderson, Hayden Anderson will go to right back. As Greenville go to the back four to try and hold on to this lead for the final 18 plus minutes. So looks like Gabriel Rodriguez will go up top, replacing Sebastian Vivas. Daniel Steedman along with Mason Tunbridge into the midfield. And now they push their big bodies forward. Tunbridge will take this one. Here's the left foot delivery. It's got Venom on it. 
Crucial header there by Leo Castro, the goal scorer. That's a corner kick. Come That's on, yet another corner for the home team. Once again, they send their big bodies forward into the box to try and cause some trouble. Doyle to take. Decent delivery. Tunbridge is there. Some claims for handball. So that was Rodriguez there with the header in the vicinity. All the way back to Ford Parker. He'll just lump this one downfield. Good bit of control by Dangler to Spengler. Now more on the right side here than the left. Just over 15 minutes here for Tormenta to try and find something from this match. Kill White. Ramos. Here's Steedman. Nice little turn by him. That one's given away. Steedman, the 28th pick in the MLS draft by Austin three years ago. Has three starts in the middle of the park this season. Also played for Charlotte as well as NCFC during their USL championship years. Vincent Ramos, the captain of the US Virgin Islands team. They lost in World Cup qualifying already to the British Virgin Islands on penalty kicks. As Daniel Wu looks to take some time off the clock here. Out to Pollock. He goes long. Looking for a cap. Looking for Castro. Stretches there. He'll knock it off. Castro and out of play for a goal kick. Tormenta now maybe going to more of a back three with the wing backs. Trying to push a few more bodies forward into this midfield and match up with Greenville. Though they've, they've now gone to the four at the back as this long ball is too long for Rodriguez. Mentioned Gabriel Rodriguez, two goals and an assist this season already. Man from Colombia. Zion Scarlett, the Jamaican, young Jamaican. Still only a teenager. That's good work from Chapa. Pollock now under pressure from Spengler. Now just to find Castro. Now a chance for Scarlett. That's a delightful ball through. Lion McKinnon's got the other side of Dangler. Can he make it 2 0? Yes, he can. Lion McKinnon. They're saying it's offside. Well, well. I'd like another look at this one. Zion Scarlett with a delightful ball through. Oh, I thought he was the good side of Jake Dengler, but the linesman on that far side disagrees with me. I thought that was a perfectly timed run by Liam McKinnon and a quality finish, but it'll count for nothing and we remain 1-0. Zion Scarlett. Nice addition in the offseason. Impressed early. So his minutes cut a little bit. He's trying to get used to USL League One play. That was a beautiful cutting ball to McKinnon. Apparently just a split second too late. Now a chance for Tormenta. Rodriguez drops it back to Dengler. Really the first time we've seen Greenville sort of get behind tonight, except for that early chance from McKinnon. One thing Rick Wright said he really wanted to see his team do a little more was get behind. Here's Tunbridge looking for Steedman. It turned over. Now a chance for Castro, the goal scorer. Double teamed on this side. Good work there by the veteran, though. 
turn away from trouble. That's beautiful. Ah, and even another beautiful pass. Leo Castro now. Dengler's coming over. His long legs will help him get there just in front of Castro. Then fouls the big center back. See what Zion Scarlett brings to this Greenville side. Great vision, pace. He can score as well. Already got one goal this season in League One. It was a beautifully improvised finish early this season. Here he is on the ball now. And in the Jamaican under 20s. Here he is, Scarlett. Left for the ball in. Dengla makes a complete mess of it. Clearly didn't mean to pass it back to Ford Parker, so he was okay to pick it up. Not the prettiest bit of defending we've seen tonight. It was effective nonetheless. As Parker rolls this one out. Trying to hope his teammates can bail him out of his first half mistake that led to the goal by Leo Castro. Ford Parker appears to have tweaked something on that last play. He's trying to work it out. He's certainly not looking at full strength right now. Let's see if that becomes an issue. Pollack with a lovely aerial door win. Scarlett now knocks it on to McKinnon, who's onside this time. McKinnon to the edge of the box. Onto his right foot. With the strike, Lyon McKinnon! This time he's onside. 2-0 Greenville. His fourth of the season as the man from Switzerland continues to find the back of the net here in 2024. He was denied just a few minutes ago by the assistant referee's flag. He wasn't to be denied this time. Onto his right foot, through the legs of Callum Stretch and passed an outstretched for Parker who could do nothing about that strike. From the former Villanova man. Who just has a knack for finding those corners. In the 80th minute of play, goal scored by Greenville number nine, Ryan McKinnon. It's Greenville double their lead now. Look to extend their lead at the top as you see for Parker still feeling Something after that pass back that he certainly wasn't expecting from Jake Dengler. Lyon McKinnon on the score sheet once again. Still 10 plus minutes though here. Can Tormenta find something here in the, the dying minutes of this contest? And also has two goals in the US Open Cup, so six goals in all competitions for the second year man. Zagowski tracking back with Ramos. Mentioned how potent this Castro McKinnon combination is. Up top, now a chance to break here. Castro. He's got Zion Scarlett, who's really changed this game since he's coming on. Zion Scarlett with a touch. Good work by Callum Stretch to get his touch in and knock it away from the feet of the Jamaican. Now a chance for Spengler. His young legs still with plenty of running left in them. That's a good poke away by Herrera, though. Staying on his feet and poking that one away. Corvino. Herrera goes down under the challenge of Spengler. It's a big road win for the Triumph if they can hold on here. Squeaked into the playoffs last season. Made the playoffs every year in their existence in League One. Obviously, winners once, finalists two other times. Spengler. Tyler Pollack loses possession. Chance here for Watson. There's too many Greenville players back there, though. Oh, Watson, the fifth substitute for Tormenta, perhaps came on after that second goal. So that ball's given away now. Here's a chance for Tormenta. Steedman. Spengler. 
Ryan Watson, he's got, Englishman's got himself a couple of goals already this season. As that ball's cleared away. Tunbridge, under pressure from Anderson. That's good work from the youngster. And that's off Tunbridge. I think, no, it's going to be instead a throw for the home team. Doyle crosses it with the left foot. Smith there once again. It's Tormenta trying to cut this deficit in, in half. Putting some pressure on Greenville late here. Throwing will be taken by Ramos. See how deep he can get into this Greenville box. Reasonably deep, but headed away by Anderson. McKinnon nods it along. Zukowski now with a chance for McKinnon to run. Lion McKinnon all on his own, looking for a second of the night. Will he beat Park for Parker? Yes, he will. That's two for Lion McKinnon and three for Greenville as once again another three goal effort in League One for the men from the upstate of South Carolina. Can't let that man get the other side of your defense. Look more of a hopeful ball from Zdokowski, but Tormento are pressing up so far. McKinnon's pace was always going to win, and Ford Parker beaten in his near post. And a brace for the man from Switzerland. Arnold Doy was trying his best to get back there. And even at this late stage, McKinnon with far too much pace. Should be game set a match for this one. McKinnon now with his fifth League One goal of the campaign. They opened their season with a 3 1 win at home against Spokane as Nikakota was offside. They put three past the Hailstorm in their last League One, sorry, their last home League One contest a couple of weeks ago, and now three here tonight. And a clean sheet so far against Tormenta, who have been so hot with their goal scoring of late, but mostly in the US Open Cup. Did have that 3-0 win over Lexington, but now finding themselves on the opposite end of that result here tonight. Rick Wright with a smile on his face, and for good reason. He's really got this team feeling good about themselves. They're having fun. They're pressing, they're knocking it about in the middle of the park. Ian Cameron had so many good things to say about Greenville during the week. He said he's loved watching them play. He's loved their aggression in the 3-5-2. He said they were stable under John Harks, rugged, but Rick Wright has surprised a lot of people. Very vibrant, aggressive front foot strategy, technical. Can move the ball, pretty cool to see, and Ian Cameron's had a front row seat to witness things here tonight. Zukowski, Chapa Herrera, they're looking for a fourth here at Greenville. They've been outshot 12 to nine. Only the four shots on target, three of them have gone in. He got the early gift from Ford Parker. And a superb strike from distance by Liam McKinnon. And then the breakaway as Tormenta were looking for the their first goal to try and get back in this game, just push too many bodies forward. Here's Jamie Smith pushing forward now. But off to McKinnon, looking for the hat trick. He's got four in a game before. Chapa Herrera. Tyler Polak still with the legs in this game. Zion Scarlett. Impact his mate since coming off the bench. That's going to be a free kick. So he runs into the back of Nick Okoda. Goals in the 33rd minute by Leo Castro. The 80th minute by Liam McKinnon. And the, and the second one for him in the 85th. Liam McKinnon now at the top of the League One scoring charts with five. Hayden Anderson now. Playing well tonight at that right wing back spot. Zion, Zion Scarlett gets the assist on the first McKinnon goal. Zakowski, our player to watch tonight with the assist on the second. Mm -hmm. 
Castro looks like he's going to go the distance, the veteran. Let's take a look at your current standings. Papa Mensa had the League One lead with his fourth goal last night, but now overtaken by Liam McKinnon with five. Adrian Bilhart in third, former Tormenta man. Along in third with three now. Scarlett's ball from McKinnon is off target. Soon see how many minutes off stoppage time we have as Chapa Herrera still pressing and harassing. Reception by Polak, not for the first time tonight. <laughs> Must remember that Greenville are without two of their most influential veterans tonight. No Brandon Fricky as he continues to deal with a lower leg injury. No Sebastian Velasquez. And they just haven't missed a beat. This is a strong run here by Tunbridge. Trying to play that ball through. Gunther Rankenberg take more valuable seconds off the clock as we hit the 90 here. We will have three minutes of stoppage time presented by Vision Source. The fourth official has indicated there will be a minimum of three minutes of additional time to the second half. Kowski pucks it around his man, but just too heavy all the way through. 2-4 Parker will not get his second clean sheet of the season tonight. It was a mistake of his that led to that first goal by Leo Castro. Here's Watson. Spengler. That's a foul there by Corvino. You have to think that Ajmir Sp Spengler would love to strike this one with his left foot. See if he can ruin the clean sheet for Gunther Rankenberg, who was almost caught napping there for a half second as Tunbridge tries to gain a couple more yards. It's like Tunbridge will fancy a crack. We're going to have a late substitution here for the triumph. So look, try and hold on to this clean sheet. Carlos Sanguiano, perhaps for Chapa Herrera. Here's Tunbridge now. Looks like he may strike this one, the former University of San Diego man. In his first year as a pro. Tunbridge with a strike! Just curved past the near post off Gunther Rankenberg, who clearly had it covered. And here is Carlos Anguiano, the In former half at a time, Phoenix yeah. Rising yeah. man. For Entering the match, number six, Carlos USL championship winner last season with the aforementioned Phoenix Rising. Playing against Greenville in the US Open Cup win last year, went 90 minutes in that game and impressed Rick Wright. He earned himself a contract here with the Triumph. Here's Scarlett. He's looking for McKinnon, trying to provide his teammate with the hat trick, not this time as Dengler. Gets in the way as we're under a minute remaining here from Statesbrook. Naya Watson. Here's Corvino, the rookie. To Scarlett. Former crew two man. That was given away. Rodriguez now under pressure from Corvino. Ball of energy. Rick Wright always talks about Corvino. Struggled a little bit midweek against Louisville. He's played his part tonight since coming on. Ramos. Heavy touch there as Smith just smashes it away. Into the Greenville night and that's the last bit of action we'll have here in Statesboro. As 
the Greenville Triumph pick up a crucial three points on the road to remain in first place in USL League One with 13 points now. Lion McKinnon, that man there with a brace. The final 10 minutes of this one after Leo Castro had given Greenville the lead in the 33rd minute when he capitalized on a dropped ball by Ford Parker. Let's take a look at your save of the match brought to you by Vision Source. It was an early one by Gunther Rankenberg. Good work by Fonseca on the right. That was right at Rankenberg. That is your save of the match presented by Vision Source. Rankenberg was steady in the net this evening for Greenville. Didn't have to make any spectacular saves, but it was in the right place. At the right time, we'll see if he's earned himself another start. When gets going Saturday against Richmond. Hi, I'm Michelle Smith Lake from Kids World Learning Center here in Statesboro, Georgia. Let us take care of all of your child care needs here at Kids World Learning Center, from your infants all the way to your after schoolers. We also have a summer camp and holiday camp for those older children. And we have our brand new bus for our field trips for the children to have fun and to learn and to explore new things all around our beautiful county. Thank you for trusting us with your most prized possession. Optum Health System's commitment to you has not changed. Unmatched safety and compassionate care. Others may talk about the new normal, but at Optum Health System, we've always provided high quality, personalized care safely. If you have recently delayed your care, we want to reassure you we are prepared to care for you. Our absolute commitment to safe, high-quality, personalized care is stronger than ever. We welcome you back to Optum Health System. I need to try it first. Yeah. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. As a brace from that man right there in the center of your screen, Liam McKinnon helped the Greenville Triumph to a 3-0 commanding victory over South Georgia Tormenta here this evening as we close out week seven in USL League One. Let's take a look at your full-time highlights here from this contest. It was a tight one for most of the first half. Just an unfortunate mistake by Ford Parker that led to the first goal here. Hayden Anderson skipped around a couple of Tormentors players. Fired with a bit of a hopeful cross towards Leo Castro. Ford Parker fumbles it right to the feet of the veteran Colombian. He knocks it home from two yards out for his third goal of the League One season. And that would be the only thing separating the two teams until deep into the second half. The entrance of Zion's comet really opened things up offensively for Greenville. Nate Schultz here is the mistake from Dangle. This was the first chance just wide from Liam McKinnon with his right foot. And, but McKinnon would make it 2-0 here. Cuts back to his right foot through traffic inside the far post of Four Parker. That one was in the 80th minute. His fourth League One goal of the season. The man from Switzerland. And five minutes later, he would make it 3-0. Ben Zakowski will get the assist here. You saw Liam McKinnon making that run early. He got the other side of the Tormenta defenders. Ran 55 plus yards before a composed side-footed finish. Past the despairing Ford Parker in his hot pink outfit tonight. As McKinnon brace, Castro. Goals give the triumph their 3-0 win. They were outshot 13-9. Only had the four shots on target. Three of them went in. Clinical finishing for the men from the upstate of South Carolina. Eight corners for Tormenta. Lee Cameron said he worked on set pieces with some additional personnel this offseason, but couldn't get them to work tonight. On the corners as they fall 3 0. Greenville stop a two game losing streak. The league one lost to Charlotte last time out, as well as the U.S. Open Cup last, but those are all in the rear view window now as they pull out the 3-0 victory here on a beautiful moon tonight in Georgia. And a beautiful performance by the Greenville Triumph and Liam McKinnon as they take all three points with three goals for the third time this season 
in USL One Action. My name's Ross Devonport. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you next week for Jägermeister Cup Action. Have a good evening. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League, League One, cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League, League One.